How's it going guys, I'm Theo Joe, and statistically most of you are probably using Google Chrome as your web browser, but which version of Google Chrome? Did you know there's actually several different versions or so-called update channels, and there are four of them to be exact. These are the stable update channel, the beta, the developer, and the canary build. And no, unfortunately, the fabled Google Ultron is not one of them, but we are gonna be talking about the four that I just mentioned in this video, talking about the differences between these different versions and which one you might wanna consider using if you wanna change from the stable version at all. Before we get any further though, I wanna quickly thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for easily building a professional style website for anything from an online store to a photography portfolio with plenty of tools for marketing analytics and more. You can learn more by going to squarespace.com slash Theojo, and that link is also in the description. So now let's get started. So first up, we have the stable version of Chrome. This is the main one that gets pushed out to everybody. And this is the one you're gonna be using unless you specifically sought out one of the other versions. So if you don't know which one you're on, this is the one you're on. The stable version gets a ton of testing before it's finally pushed out to everybody. Obviously they don't want millions of people to get a version of Chrome that has a bug in it that even if it only affects a small percentage of people, that's still a lot. So ideally, it should be completely free of bugs. And the stable version also has all the fully developed features. There's no you know, half-baked features in there that are enabled by default at least. There might be some in the hidden flags menu, but that's for another video. And the stable version doesn't get updated too often, usually every several weeks at least, and only after all these features and it's been gone through all the other development channels already. However, when we start to get into the other update channels, things start to change. So first of all, we can talk about the beta version, where if you go on Google's Chrome website, they have a page for each of these. And you can see on the beta page, there's a couple different description boxes. So one says preview features in development, so you can get features early, obviously. Also, it says give feedback to make Chrome a better browser. So since you're gonna be testing these features ahead of time, they're gonna be taking a look at your feedback more closely. And then also that it's updated weekly. And if you look at the support pages for the different update channels, it'll tell you that the beta version gets updated about four to six weeks ahead of the stable version. So even though it's updated weekly, those updates are gonna be at least four to six weeks ahead of when they would be released on the stable. Now, even though the beta version is not technically the stable version, it is mostly stable, so it should be free of any major breaking bugs, and it should be mostly bug-free in general, except for maybe some less obvious ones that got through the testing. But by the time that build does make it to the stable version, it will have gone through significantly more testing still, so then everything should be completely ironed out. And the beta version is mainly gonna be for people who just want to test out new features of Chrome and get them a little bit early, but don't want to deal with a very unstable browser. And another good use for it is if you're a big organization, like a corporation with thousands of users, what you can do is set a small percentage of users to use the beta version of Chrome. So that way, if there's any issues with new features or updates coming down the line of Chrome that are incompatible with like your corporate network or your website or whatever, then you'll be alerted to that early because there'll be a small percentage of people complaining. So then you can fix your network, fix your website before all those features are finalized into the stable version, which everyone's gonna be using. So it's a good way to kind of get a heads up if anything's gonna be going wrong. And that would be for issues there with your network, not necessarily Chrome. Now the third update channel we can talk about is the developer channel or just dev channel. And on the page for that, they have a couple description boxes that says develop websites for the next version of the web, test cutting edge web platform APIs, and that it's updated weekly. And on the support pages, it actually says that it's nine to 12 weeks ahead of the stable version. And therefore, it would be about five to six weeks ahead of even the beta channel. And the developer channel is probably the one where you would have to start to maybe worry about stability issues, where probably the most obvious glaring crashing bugs would already have been filtered out in the Canary version, which we're talking about in a second. But there might be some significant bugs that aren't glaringly obvious to everyone using it that haven't been patched out yet that would be in the beta version. And I believe the developer channel, like the name of the channel suggests, is mostly gonna be for developers, no surprise there. So it's gonna be for maybe web developers, web app developers, who wanna be able to make sure that their website is gonna be ready for these new features, new APIs, way ahead of when they get released into even the beta version, let alone the stable version. So they might run the developer channel so they have nine to 12 weeks 
to get things ready. If they use the beta version and only realize their website doesn't work on the beta version, well then, you know, they have four weeks or so. And who knows, depending on how big your company is, if it takes a long time to get features pushed out, then four weeks might not be enough. Whereas if you spot it in the developer channel, you'll at least have a lot more time, hopefully enough time to fix them before anyone else using the beta or stable version will ever see them. Finally though, we have the Canary version, which I think might be the most interesting one. This is completely bleeding edge. This is like, I want the features as soon as they're developed off the coder's desk. I wanna be able to use it, that sort of thing. And on the info page, it pretty much has the same info as the developer channel, except that it does say that it's updated nightly. So theoretically every day. However, it's important to know that the Canary version might have very little testing done, if at all, for some features. So you have to expect it to be very unstable. There might even be huge bugs that like prevent it from working altogether until yet another update gets pushed out maybe the next day or so. Now I haven't found any official page that shows how far ahead the Canary version is ahead of the stable version typically, but I have to assume that if the developer is gonna be nine to 12 weeks, then Canary is probably at least 12 weeks ahead. But to give you an idea, at the time of making this video, the current stable version of Chrome is on 78 and the Canary version is on 80. So it's a full two major update versions ahead of the stable version. But in any case, it is updated pretty much as soon as the features are coded by the developers. But one consequence of this is you might get, see features come and go when you're using this. So if you get super attached to a feature, it might be gone the next day and never even make it to the developer or stable channels. So really the Canary version is made for people who just need the most cutting edge of the browser for whatever reason. And this might be developers, again, who just want to be able to kind of mess around, see what's coming out of interest, and for anyone who has no real concern about the stability of the browser. All right, now before we continue and help you decide which of these channels you might want to use yourself, let me tell you more about today's sponsor. Like I mentioned before, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it extremely easy to set up a domain and website, even if you have no prior experience with that sort of thing. You can pick from any of the template designs to start with and customize it however you want, and there are plenty of categories for whatever type of website you wanna create, from an e-commerce site to a blog, a local business, a personal portfolio, just to name a few. And there are lots of powerful backend tools as well for things like appointment scheduling built right into your website, customizable email campaigns, and of course, analytics to see things like traffic sources, page views, and time on site. If you're interested, you can check out squarespace.com slash Theojo for a free trial and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And that link will also be in the description. So now let's continue. So at this point, you might be thinking, hmm, there's so many good choices, which channel should I use? And the first thing you have to understand is that you can only choose one of the first three. So out of stable, beta, and developer, you can only have one at a time, and whatever one you choose is going to install over the previous one you were using. So for example, if you're using stable and you download and install the beta version, the beta version is the one you'll be using now. The stable won't exist on your computer, it'll be uninstalled. And even though your settings should carry over between versions, even if you do reinstall it, if you're going from like the developer version back to stable and you're having really big issues with the developer version, there might be some issues going back. The settings, I don't know, might not carry over. So you probably just wanna be at least aware of that. However, the Canary version is a little bit different and you can install that separately. We'll get to that in a second. I think for most people, staying on the stable version is completely fine. It just works. Most people really don't even notice the new features getting added to Chrome unless it's like a very obvious visual feature. So you probably wouldn't even care and you'd probably be more upset if you know Chrome randomly starts crashing one day then you'll have to go and like try and reinstall the stable version again and it might just be a pain. So probably just stick with the stable version unless you specifically want and are willing to take the risks of maybe having a little bit less stability. Now, if you are willing to trade a little bit of that possible instability for the new features, then the beta version will probably be fine. It does get a reasonable amount of testing. So, you know, it got that, uh, several weeks of testing when it was in the developer phase and even the canary phase before it. So it'll probably be fine. You probably won't experience any major crashes if you're using it, but there might be some less obvious bugs hidden under the surface where if you do come across it, well, that might just be one that hasn't been fixed yet and you could send feedback on it. Now, as for the developer channel, honestly, I would probably not recommend that one at all because it's gonna be the most unstable. If you want super new features, 
Honestly, it's probably just better to go with the Canary build. And the reason for that is you can install the Canary build separately in addition to one of the previous three. So you could have the stable version and the Canary separate or the beta version and the Canary separate. And that way you can have both. And when I say separate, it really is a completely separate installation. So it's gonna have separate bookmarks, separate login for your Chrome, separate settings, all that. And I guess the reason they offer Canary as a separate installation is because it's probably just so unstable and so often changing that no one in their right mind probably would want it as their main version of Chrome. It's pretty much exclusively for testing stuff out. So that's probably why they offer it separately. But one reason I do personally have the Canary version installed in addition to just the stable version, which I normally use, is it's good if you come across something that is not working in Chrome, you're not sure if it's a bug, then you can also load up the Canary version and see if the bug also happens and behaves the same in the Canary build, and that way you can know, okay, this is probably just a Chrome bug, at least it's fixed in one of the newer versions, and if it's a bad enough bug, then you can see, okay, maybe I'll try updating to the beta version and see if the fix is in that one, or if it's not, maybe try the developer version. Whereas if it is broken in the stable version, you try the canary and it's still broken in the canary, you know it's probably just something you're gonna have to figure out yourself. Maybe it's not Chrome, you get the idea. Now, as a side note, I should point out that these different channels of Chrome are available not just on Windows, but other operating systems as well. And you can see that on the different pages. And you can see that the beta version is available on all operating systems, even mobile. So it's on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS. The developer version is available on all of those except iOS. And then the Canary version is only available on Windows, Mac, and Android, so not on iOS or Linux. Now, if you don't use Google Chrome mostly and you're just kind of watching this video out of interest, you might be interested to know that actually other browsers have similar channel structures. So for example, the new upcoming Microsoft Edge, which Microsoft is completely remaking based on Chrome, has the same channels as regular Google Chrome. So it has the beta, dev, and canary versions. So those are available. And also if you use Firefox instead of Chrome, it has similar channels, which are called beta developer and the last one is nightly instead of canary because it gets nightly builds and it does say on there that it gets daily updates. So now hopefully no matter what browser you're using, you should have a pretty good idea of maybe if you want to change to one of these channels or not, at least you're well informed. So I wanna give one more thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Again, be sure to check that link down in the description at squarespace.com slash Theojo. If you guys wanna keep watching, another video I recommend watching next is one I made talking about seven Windows features that you should maybe consider enabling that are not on by default. So I'll put that link popping up right here. It's a pretty interesting one and I think it's fun. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.